U-564 continues her first war patrol in the North Atlantic. After rearming and refueling in the port of Bergen, we made an attack on a small convoy in grid AM-71, resulting in two enemy freighters sunk. With only a quarter of her fuel expended and 10 torpedoes left, U-564 will continue to hunt on the western approaches. Hello everybody, Wolfpack here, and welcome back to some more U-Boat. U-564 is continuing her first war patrol, and we're currently in grid AL. We're heading southeast to try to cut off some enemy traffic going in and out of the Celtic and Irish Sea, as we can see here. Yeah, so I think we'll patrol this area right here. It should be quite interesting and quite hairy because there is an RAF airbase right here. So that is certainly going to make it definitely interesting. And who knows, maybe on the way home, we'll go through the English Channel to get back to our home port of Kiel. But other than that, so far, it has been a uh, very smooth sailing since our last engagement. We have not seen any other contacts besides those, uh, those few. That's an island there. That's interesting. I just, I saw it way out here. <laughs> you just barely see it. Oh, wow. But anyway, yeah, smooth sailing. No enemies have been sighted since our last video. So we're just going to go down here and patrol. Unfortunately, the latest patch for U-Boat has uh, broken the save. Uh, I'm currently playing on an older version of the game. So after this patrol, I probably will go to the new save along with the TDC mod, which is supposed to be out relatively soon. It went into testing yesterday as of recording this. So I expect it to uh, uh, be available very, very shortly. But other than that, I think that's that's all I really have. I just did want to update you folks on that. So maybe I'll go back out with U-564 with the new uh, patch. Or maybe I'll just continue uh, in a different boat like U-96 or maybe a later war scenario. We will see. But the crew itself is doing rather well. We have 10 torpedoes, 9 in the bow tubes, 1 in the stern tube. Uh, crew discipline is at 100% at the moment. We have a little bit of water in the bilge, but that is normal. I'll get that all pumped out. But yeah, the crew is relatively happy. We're at 68% fuel, so we still have quite a bit. Uh, I have assigned a second sailor to uh, Gaza here so he can try to get the best performance or fuel economy out of our engines. Well, other than that, let's go ahead and turn on the pump. I do think that is all I have to report for the time being. We will do periodic uh, sound checks just to see if any convoys or ships in general are in the area. And uh, I will keep you folks updated as U-564 continues her hunt. Okay, we have an aircraft detected coming in fast. We are going to crash dive all ahead flank. Doesn't look like the aircraft is heading right at us just now. Let's actually get our radio operator on a station so we can shoot off a message to BDU before it gets really hairy. Uh, there we go. Okay, and hopefully our boat gets under quickly. The decks are not yet awash. Looks like the aircraft is continuing on her north-northwest heading there hopefully she does not see us the boat is taking a, a very long time to get under here there we go decks are finally awash and she slips beneath the waves perfect let's go ahead and drop down to 50 meters should be sufficient I don't think that enemy aircraft was heading our way we can actually drop the periscope uh, Wolfgang that's all right buddy Okay, that aircraft actually is heading right our way. Hopefully it does not drop depth charges on our last known position. We'll continue our flank speed and let's actually change course slightly here. Hard to port. Yeah, apparently it's racing over this way. We have no idea what the aircraft is. Oh, we can see. Oh no, we don't want to intercept course. <laughs> Continue turning though just to try to throw this enemy aircraft off. And it is pretty dark down here. Very cool. Down to 70 meters. I thought I told you to stick to 50. Please. 
Hopefully the Okay, they they're coming back up. Perfect. Now we'll see if there's uh depth charges in the water. Uh, this game is just pretty impressive graphically. Like looking down here, it's just really cool looking. Anyway, I think we are in the clear. We don't have we have no idea where that enemy aircraft is for the time being. Let's go ahead and uh, rudder and midships. Course of these coordinates. And we're up to 50 meters. We'll probably come up in like 10 minutes or so because being this deep does give us a pretty big uh, debuff for discipline. Let's rig for blue as well. That'll help uh, discipline. Okay. Well, that was uh, the first thing we have seen in a long time. We're definitely getting in range of uh, Coastal Command here. So it'll be interesting, especially patrolling around the Celtic Sea to see uh, how many aircraft will be there. How uh, frequent this is going to be. Should be very exciting. Okay, it looks like we are in a pretty good spot. We just did a hydrophone check. We have been submerged for not too long now. Our battery capacity is at 82%, and we have three groups. We have uh, propeller noises down here, a group of three to six, a group of two to four, and a group of one to three. I am going to maneuver towards the group of three to six, as that is the largest one, so... Uh, maybe we can get ourselves a good attack here. It actually looks like they are heading towards us, and it also looks like uh, we'll be able to set ourselves up in a pretty good position to make a underwater attack. We're going to begin preheating all of our bow torpedoes. More propeller noises. Wow, they all just decide to pop up at one time. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. Well, it looks like we found a relatively hot area. It's currently 6 o'clock in the morning. The sun is just starting to come up. And look at this green, murky water we're currently uh, sailing through. Very cool. Um, we have a little bit of water in the bilge. Nothing to really worry about. Everything else in the boat is hunky-dory. Discipline is starting to plummet. Um, mainly due to normal lighting at this point. Let's go ahead and rig for blue for the time being. And Gaza's doing that. After that, my friend, go back and start preheating more of those torpedoes. I'll order him to do that. There we go. And we'll continue to head towards this target. It looks like they are heading northeast. Let's just uh, head south. We can also bump up our speed to standard. Hopefully that doesn't burn too much of our battery power too quickly to keep an eye on some of these other groups out here as well and there is a very high possibility that at least one of these is a group of warships and let's keep doing this make sure they're all warmed up thank you thank you thank you and we'll also order him to warm up to five just in case just in case we need to use it i will set up for a bow torpedo shot though Let's go ahead and mark this target and we'll try to see exactly where they are heading we may actually surface the boat as well just to get into uh into position here time will tell however it's like we're 20 kilometers or so away from their track battery power is at 77 percent let's make sure all of our torpedoes are warmed Damn. up let's see here okay all torpedoes are ready it looks like we have three t2s and one t1 that should be fine for our purposes let's adjust course a little bit we're currently making seven knots underwater going standard speed um battery power is at 75 let's go to full yeah we're gonna burn quite a bit but this should easily get us into uh, position to make our attack and we can have becker here raise the periscope there we go Go ahead and mark this uh, group's next position and just figure out what their track is here. Oh yeah, we are going to be in a pretty good position here. Let's adjust our course ever so slightly and we can probably slow down, down to one third, please. 
And now the shift has changed over. Wolfgang is now on the periscope. Discipline's going back up here as well. Um, let's actually go to normal lighting and that should help. There we go. And we can slow down even more. Actually, no, we want to be closer. The range of our torpedoes is just around five kilometers. So we definitely want to be within that uh, to conduct our attack. And now we're good to slow down and really just lay in wait for the enemy. Okay. It looks like the enemy ships are loading in. And, uh, okay, I guess, I guess they're not. They reposition themselves uh, slightly farther to the south. Increase speed. An accurate contact. Units may be anywhere in the radius of six kilometers. Uh, that's a pretty big radius, all things considered. Especially when the range of our torpedoes is only uh, a five, but it looks like we just got them here. One transport ship. Looks like they have slightly changed course from their original track, but here we go. Let's go ahead and mark the target here. Bam. There we go. And we'll start plotting them out. Um, I don't think I can transmit... Uh, radio messages underwater. Oh, we can. We can in the game. In real life, you could not, but you could receive underwater, but not transmit. Okay, let's go ahead and get back on the hydrophone. And we will plot this uh, ship out. I may actually do the 3 minute and 15 second method here just to establish the target speed rather accurately with the TDC mod. Uh, there is a stopwatch included in the game, but I suppose I can just use my phone or whatever to uh, get it done here. The TDC mod, by the way, uh, should be coming out very soon. I do believe I mentioned it in the intro, however, uh, just to reiterate, it is coming out fairly soon. So that is um, honestly a, <laughs> a much needed mod for this game. It really adds a lot, in my opinion. So we're going to increase speed to full just to close this gap a little bit more. More propeller noises. Another group? Holy. Okay, no, we're just reacquiring other groups because Mueller ran to the radio right next door and is now back on the hydrophone. Okay, that's fine. And I can actually already make this out. It looks like this is going to be a Liberty cargo ship. Let's just uh, plot this out. It's like they're heading more or less... Uh, Zero nine zero there. Hmm. Okay. Just course. I'll head flank, and I will mark their position. And I actually will three fifteen them. Okay, we're getting really close to the tail end of our three minute and fifteen second timer here, and we have quite a few other contacts here now as well. It looks like we have a pretty large tanker and that will definitely be our primary target. However, if we get the speed down for one of these ships, uh, it shouldn't be too difficult to, uh, well, the other ships would be going around the same speed considering they're a part of the same convoy here. So we will draw a line from point A to point B and it looks like they are heading 8.3 knots. So that is good information to know. We're going to adjust our course slightly. We're still outside of torpedo range. We need to go flank speed to get in here. That course change really uh, screwed us up a little bit here as well as uh, the inaccurate range uh, reading, but we should be able to get into position to make a somewhat decent attack here. And we are getting very, very close. So these three ships right here are going to be our primary target. Number four back here, um, I think he is a deck gun material at this point. However, if I shoot two at the tanker, one at the Liberty ship, and then one at this cargo ship, I think that'll be a, a fairly good spread there. Let's go ahead and check our periscope. All right, let's raise this up a little bit more. So here's our Liberty cargo ship, lock on target and begin the identification process. Liberty ship, recognize. Okay, we're going to shift over to the next target. Lock on target, come on. There we go, locked on. Let's see what you are. War class, no. Actually, I think uh, our tanker friend, 
maybe not a Dale class. It has a stack in the center, which is a pretty good giveaway here. C3 cargo, no. T2, no. Wow. What tanker are you? Hmm. Did I, I obviously missed it, so we'll go back through and try to figure out what kind of tanker this is here. The L class, no. War class, recognize. 6,000 tonner. Actually, that may only uh, need one torpedo then to put her under. Okay, next target, Empire Bell looks like it to me. Recognize, unlock. Next target, lock on target. And we will just identify this one just for fun. No real reason here. Um, Empire Tower, you didn't know. Empire Explorer, recognize. There we go. Okay, let's go to our Liberty cargo ship. Um, I probably... Actually, I do want to just see what her speed is on this here. Just to, just to double check and we'll start. I'm assuming it's around eight knots, but rather be safe than sorry at this point. And we'll do multiple methods just to double check our work. Looks like she's listing already uh, to port there. It's kind of interesting. Okay, once our crosshair hits her stern, we will stop. And also, this Liberty cargo ship has all these gun platforms, but does not have any guns, which is surprising. All right, stop, set, eight knots. Yep, okay. Um, range to target is next. Set and angle on bow. I normally eyeball this. Uh, it looks pretty close to 90 degrees, just shy of it, 84. Okay, unlock target and, oh, please have, oh my gosh, our torpedoes are not preheated anymore. <sighs> okay, get, get to work, get to work, get to work, get to work. Um, you, my friend, you can actually start preheating too. You can start preheating too. Preheat tube too. That will drastically minimize the chances of a dud. Unfortunately, the Liberty ship is in prime position. However, we're just going to go through and uh, get the rest of these ships. Eight knots is, oh no, range. We will get her range here. She is currently going eight knots like the rest of the convoy set. One kilometer range, eight knots. Angle on bow, let's see. See, she is just shy of 80 degrees as well. Uh, the the unwarmed up torpedoes really threw a wrench into uh, my plans here. Let's slow the boat down just a little bit. Tube one is almost preheated already, as well as tube two. We're just gonna fire as they're preheated. So we're gonna hit uh, Liberty Cargo and then this uh, war class tanker. These other two are just gravy. We'll get them after we'll figure it out. Thankfully, it doesn't take too long to preheat torpedoes, but um, a little longer than I would like, quite frankly. Okay, we are going to do another range reading while we sit here and wait, and we'll also uh, probably update our angle on bow. Set two kilometers still, okay. And angle on bow, wrong one. Angle on bow here, that is, 90 degrees give or take a, a few it's probably just past 90 degrees there and once our tube one is oh, ready depth 1.5 meters we are going to order these fellows hey, to begin warming up tube hey, three hey, and tube oh, four all right tube one is flooded and ready to roll tube one Close. Close. Okay, unlock target, transition to our boiler, lock on target. Everything's looking good. Angle on bow, it is just over 90 apparently, but it's, it looks like it's just shy of 90 here. So we'll do 86, okay. Speed eight knots, range one kilometer, flood tube two. Depth 1.5 meters, that should be fine. Tubes three and four are still preheating. Hopefully they'll be ready after this. 
Tube 2, Los. All right, Tube 2 is away, but torpedoes are running towards their targets. Um, this one may be tricky. However, okay, Tube 3 is almost ready. We will unlock. Lock on targets. Let's see. Angle on bow. Once again, just shy. Yeah, just shy. Oh, here we go. Got to redo this. Angle on bow, just shy. Oh, wrong. Wrong, <laughs> wrong angle. Just shy of 90 degrees. Uh, range probably two kilometers, so 2,000 meters. And speed is eight knots. The torpedo is off half the torpedo has covered half its distance. They are running towards the target. Still looking okay to me. They don't look bad. Hopefully this is not a complete whiff of an attack. All right. Flood tube three. Speed 44 knots. Or 40 knots, excuse me. Let's adjust angle on bow one more time. Probably closer to 89. Tube three. Loose. Okay. This torpedo is looking interesting. We'll see if we actually get a hit here. Uh, not 100% sure about that one. 30 seconds to impact as being very optimistic. Okay, use a little bit of time compression here. I think we do have hits. They may hit more in the bow. Oh boy, is this one just going to miss the target? Oh, is it going to hit it in the bow? Oh my god, that was way too close. Way too close. It does look like we'll actually hit the Liberty ship here though. That is uh, right in the bow. Yep, that's a hit. She just went to a dead stop after uh, that torpedo hit. It does look like this one may accidentally strike uh, the oiler. I'm, uh, I'm surprised the oiler ended up missing. We can always fire another eel at her. Lock on target. Angle on bow just over 90 degrees. Speed will probably set to 7.5. Ooh, and the oiler did get hit by that torpedo. Well, that's less than ideal, uh, all things considered. But she has erupted into flames. Uh, looks like the torpedo intended for the oiler is just going to swim on past and completely miss. And she is going down. One torpedo, one ship there. She's done for. It looks like these other vessels have gone evasive and are... Uh, not really going to be uh, legitimate targets at this point for us to be able to hit. Wow, just a hair off. Just a hair off. But that's fine. Um, that makes things interesting anyway. Two out of three is not bad by any means. Looks like this torpedo is continuing to swim off. Our last chance was it would hit this Empire Explorer, but that's not going to happen either. I could always continue on our course and re-engage. Let's start moving. I wonder if this Liberty Cargo is essentially dead in the water. We could hit her with a stern torpedo. Let's increase our speed. Um, Preheat tube number five, please. And it looks like she is steaming still, but she is not really zigzagging. That makes her relatively good uh, stern torpedo material if i do say so myself i'm surprised she isn't zigzagging she may not be capable doesn't look like she really has a list and it looks like she took minimal damage with that bow hit right there well we'll probably fire another fish at her so let's just run alongside them and try to overtake them well, actually, I think I've decided we are going to completely break contact and re-engage this convoy. It looks like the rest of the ships have stopped zigzagging. They're heading, you know, in a straight line now. So we're going to try to maneuver, get it out of visual range, and reposition ourselves for a second torpedo attack. All right, we are currently surfacing the boat. I have a course plotted here to try to maneuver in front of this convoy once again, and we should be able to engage them underwater. It's currently eight o'clock or just, just shy of nine o'clock in the morning here. 
So oxygen is starting to replenish. Let's go ahead and turn on our diesel compressor along with our pump here and uh, get the boat in fighting order once again. We're also going to <laughs> preheat all of our torpedoes and make sure those are actually preheated when we get into combat this time around. Looks like the watch crew is getting on the bridge. Let's see if they're in visual range. They may be just in it. Okay, so we sighted their chimney smoke and we see one of them. So we'll try to maintain contact with their chimney smoke here. However, we want to avoid detection and we don't want to spook them again so they don't start you know, zigzagging any more than they currently were. But hopefully they won't suspect the thing. It looks like they're no longer identified. I'm gonna have to re-identify all these freighters, but that's no big deal, no big deal at all. Discipline is a little low. I will have to work to fix that. Um, switch to blue lighting. Um, we'll start We'll start working on that. Mostly the alarm and fatigue at this point. Um, we can actually get Rudolph on the radio. He can play some music and improve morale as we continue the chase. Okay, our plans have encountered a slight hiccup. There is an enemy contrail here to the north of our current position. It does not look like it has sighted us. However, the second we see it turn this way, we are going to emergency dive. I think it's just going to fly on by, thankfully. Okay, that is very nice of it. Thankfully, it's not going to come in and dive on our position. We'll be able to continue our chase. We're slowly overtaking the transports here, and we should be in a relatively good position soon. It's currently 9.25 in the morning. Our friends here have made a sudden course change, and it looks like they are currently heading northeast. So we're turning U-564 around to try to uh, adapt and get into a good attack position now. We could probably... Yeah, let's jog like this just a little bit. We can probably submerge the boat now. Let's begin. Uh, I don't want to begin preheating. Uh, let's just do it. <laughs> let's get in there. Start doing it. Okay, let's go down to periscope depth now. Battery capacity is at 86%. They are currently being recharged. I guess we can stay on the surface for just a little bit longer to uh, recharge those batteries just a little bit more. Yeah, we're getting a little too close for comfort, so down to periscope depth we go. Discipline is now at 100%, as you can see. Let's check the torpedo situation. I want them all preheated. Okay, they are all currently preheated. We have three T1s and one T2. I actually want to move out that uh, T2 and plop in a T1, if that is possible. That way we can get the... Uh, speed varieties i can use the higher speed torpedo we'll see gaza may do that once the boat is submerged indeed he is we will assign additional sailors in there let's see has that moved out he will preheat actually you know what we'll just keep it it's it's not worth the trouble Let's make sure all torpedoes are warmed up, even our stern torpedo. Yep, we have a T2 and tube five, and it is ready to rock and roll, perfect. We can drop our speed down to around one third now as well. The boat is of course submerged and operating at periscope depth. Time to switch Rudolph over to the hydrophone. We will assign one additional sailor. And I think we're good. I'm going to unassign a sailor here just to keep morale high. Don't want them to feel overworked or anything. More propeller noises off to the east there. More propeller noises. That's that other group way off to the northwest. Inaccurate contact six kilometers away. Well, well, well. We'll see. Hopefully we stumble across them here. We have a general idea of what they're up to. There we go. Perfect. This is the Liberty cargo ship. I'm going to get nice and close this time around and 
And they are doing some sporadic movements, it seems. Okay. Well, the Liberty cargo ship's going to be uh, our primary target here. Let's plot that out. We're currently four kilometers away from her track. Let's increase speed to standard. Get nice and close. And what is this freighter doing? Just not acting uh, normal. Okay, they're kind of in a echelon formation here. Call ahead full. Okay. It's time to take a look through the scope and begin grabbing our solution. Okay, we need to identify them once again. Lock on target. This is, of course, our Liberty cargo ship friend. It is still damaged. So that's cool that that actually carries over. I would be surprised if it didn't. Um, we'll go ahead and get her range as well. Set two kilometers out currently. Angle on bow, 80, uh, 75 degrees to port. Set speed of target. Start. We'll just time her from bow to stern. That hit right in the bow was pretty ineffective, which is not all that surprising. Okay. And stop set seven knots now. Okay. I can believe it. Next target lock identification. Let's see what you are. Empire Explorer recognize range to target. I have a feeling these ships are going different speeds. Um, it is varying a little bit here. So let's try to speed out the the Lynch. It's an interesting ship name. Looks like it's carrying some trucks on board. And it is, in fact, British. Okay, slowly but surely. And stop. Set six knots on her. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Well, we are going to just get as close as possible. Slow down the boat. Unlock. And if my torpedoes are not preheated. Okay, they are. We're okay. Unlock target. This one is going to be fairly close. We'll just pop her... Um, when the time is right. Let's get one more speed reading just to be absolutely sure. Start. Angle on bow was very close to 90 degrees. So it'll probably be at it once it's time to fire. Yeah, very, very close. And see all the little, all the crew standing on the deck. Okay. Looking good, looking good. Tube one is a G7A torpedo. So we will set that to run at 40 knots. Stop, set, eight knots, eight knots. Okay, we're gonna go with eight. Why not? Flood two points. Speed 40 knots, depth 1.5 meter. Okay, hopefully one dead center is enough, two but one. Uh, let's actually get her speed or range real fast, just so I have an accurate update of one kilometer. Okay, two, one, Los. Los! Tube one is away. Okay, next target, unlock, shift over to this one here. We're gonna go with seven knots on this target. Angle on bow is just shy of 90 degrees, but let's get their speed one more time. Set one kilometer, okay. Angle on bow, I'm gonna guess around 80 degrees to a port. Perfect. Bring this up. Tube 
to flood speed 40 knots, depth 1.5 meters. And the last ship is so far away, she is not at a very good angle right now. Tube 2. Okay. Both torpedoes are away. This torpedo has covered half its distance, and it looks pretty good, I think. Uh, hopefully this one actually lands home here. And let's check on our other torpedo, running hot, straight, and normal towards the target. And this Liberty Cargo is definitely going to eat this one here. Or smack dab in the center from the looks of it. There we go. Yep, pretty much right in the middle. That is going to be a crippling hit for a Liberty Cargo ship. And look at that blast there. Wow. And she is erupted in the flames. We have our other merchant ship here who's about to get hit. Torpedo impact. Just forward of the main bridge area, but both merchant ships have been hit. Now we just have number three to fire at. And we will do that shortly. Serious damage on both of those ships. The Liberty cargo ship is probably going to go down with that hit. Yeah, she's taking on water and fast. And the men are already taking to the life rafts. There we go. She's done. She has sunk. This ship is, yeah, taking on lots of water as well. I have a th feeling she will not survive that either. Uh, let's see how far away this target is. 470 meters just outside of arming range for our torpedoes. We'll see. If she keeps uh, this turn up, she may be outside of... Uh, or inside our minimum range. Liberty Cargo has sunk. And there we go, going beneath the waves. Look at all that cargo there. And uh, various debris floating in the water along with the cargo. That is a new addition, so that is pretty cool. This one will be the one to watch. We'll see if we need to use any deck on ammunition. I probably will not use a second torpedo. Unlock target. Up periscope just a little bit. What is... Why does the water look like that? That's, that's odd. Anyway, we're just going to have to uh, ignore that for the time being. Yeah, this ship is awfully close. Debating. Do I want to... Full, let's start reversing the boat. That's really distracting, <laughs> quite frankly, the water looking like that. But we're just gonna have to, we're just gonna have to suffer through it here, folks. Um, Empire Tower, Empire Bell. Yes, recognize the target. Range the target. Ever so slowly, it's coming up, up, up. I can barely see the water line because the the water is like uh, transparent. Set. But, I mean, you know what I mean. Speed of target. Now, this will be interesting. Start. Yeah, this weird uh, water effect is very distracting for sure. 530 meters. That sounds about right. I am curious to see what this target's uh, speed is going to be, especially because she is zigzagging all over the place. This is going to be an interesting shot. That is for sure. We'll see if we can pull it off here. Um, it may not sink this vessel, but it'll damage her enough to where we'll just have to throw a few deck gun rounds her way to uh, finish her off. There was that aircraft uh, patrolling around earlier, so I'll be curious to see if it decides to come down this way after three merchant ships have been hit. Stop. Five knots. Okay, that is reasonable. And she is turning hard, continuing her zigzag. Uh, angle on bow just over 90 degrees. We'll go with 100. Open up the tubes. Tube 2 is a G7A oh, torpedo. Speed 40, 40 knots. Depth 1.5 meters. Just to avoid any uh, issues. Tube 3 looks. Get it out of there. Okay, a torpedo is running towards the target. That actually looks pretty good. It looks like she may have actually uh, sped up just a little bit here. Oh. Let's get our camera out of the water. There we go. She's very low in the water, but there's our torpedo heading towards the target, and that looks like it's going to be a hit. We'll see. Hopefully it's not a dud. Boom. Torpedo impact right in the middle. Very good. Pretty good attacks all around, I do have to say. Uh, this attack, we've hit with every torpedo we fired. It's three for three. Last time was two for three. 
Okay, it is time to start moving forward and to surface the boat. She has experienced serious damage. Let's see, how is the lynch doing? We may just wait a little bit and move alongside them. I'm actually going to get Rudolph on the radio, shoot off that radio message, get that uh, that sweet, sweet renown. We got an incoming radio message from a ship. Uh, we can decipher that. It's probably an SOS, but or one of these other ships have uh, sighted it. There were quite a few groups. They see all the smoke. Um, so maybe it's... Oh, wow. Prince David here. She's going down. She is going down. Yeah, that fire's taking her out. Okay, send that off to BDU. The Lynch is the last one we are waiting on. There she goes beneath the waves. This is the last ship we are waiting on. I will use a little bit of time compression. Oh, just to see, and she is done for. Unknown group coming in. This is the one that radioed, so that's good to know that there is actually merchant ships in that group. Yeah, massive smoke column spotted. So that vessel is a part of that group. That will be our next target. Okay, it is time to surface the boat. We are going to collect the supply out of the water. I don't think we'll even have to waste any deck gun ammunition on this vessel. It looks like she is taking on water rather quickly and will be beneath the waves relatively soon. The crew is even abandoning ship, taking to the lifeboats. Okay, U-564 emerges. Turn on our... Actually, don't turn it on yet until the hatch is open. Don't want to... Don't want to kill our crew. Okay, we're good. Turn on the diesel compressor. Turn on the pump. Make sure diesel engines are running. Yeah, going standard speed. Let's head over. Oh, there we go. Looks like there's no supplies in the water right here. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take some of these boxes and see what's going on. Another radio message from this vessel. It's probably just reporting another smoke column here. Okay, we got some exotic fruits. We're gonna place those on the deck and go ahead and move those. Uh, Move those over to the galley. We also have another box that's slowly bubbling up to the surface right alongside us. We will pick this one up as well. This is the preserved pork. Um, it's gonna be a little saltier than normal, but that's okay. There we go, hello. And we will place this on the deck as well. Move that into the storage room. Transfer that, yes please. And Wolfgang's going to transfer all of that to storage. We're still waiting on the lunch to finally go down. It may be a little bit, but once we've moved all this food stuff over, we will go and uh, just throw a few deck gun rounds down range to finish her off. Well, this ship is taking a long time to go down. And considering we have uh, more vessels in the area that I do want to try to engage, we are going to wrap this up and uh, finish her. We're using armor-piercing rounds right now. Yeah, boy. It probably would be... Uh... Oh, take Super the deck gun, please. We're going to switch to high explosive, actually, for this. And just aim for the superstructure here. Try to start a fire, and hopefully that'll uh, finish her off. Oh, fire one. Fire two. We'll hit her in the stern as well. Another hit right in the truck. So that truck is never going to work. <laughs> uh -oh. There we go. Okay, we're out of high explosive. So looks like we're switching the armor piercing. Try to aim for the water line here. Uh, poke a few more holes into her. Get her to finally go down. I could probably stop now. I mean, I'm sure that was enough to sink her. Although they have made the deck gun a little less powerful. Uh, than it has been in previous patches, which, I don't know. In my opinion, that's overall a good thing. Okay, we'll continue to fire. Oh, she's sinking. That's it. All right, send that off. Thank you, Arno. You can uh, go to bed or something. Go do something else, pal. Actually, actually, no, you cannot. You know what you need to do? Get back on that gun. Get back on that gun. Now you better start climbing back down that ladder. <laughs> uh, this is unacceptable, my friend. Unacceptable. 
All right, get me on there. And we'll just swing it back around. Ah, uh, beautiful. Perfect. All right, now now you can go somewhere else. Uh, go to Copy sleep. Team. Thank you. Okay, well, now we will head up here and try to intercept this unknown group. However, I do think that will do it for today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed it. It was quite a lot of fun. I'm thinking in the next episode, we'll attack this uh, merchant ship group that is uh, right next to us and then uh, make a dash through the channel to try to get back to Kiel. I figured that would be rather exciting and a kind of good way to end U564's uh, relatively short saga. Uh, anyway. But yep, that's all I have for now. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like and comment as it really does help out the channel. But that is all I have for now. This is Wolfpack345 signing off and I will see you all on the next one.